Hi, I'm Casey Fennell, Miss Universe Jamaica, and you are watching Caribbean Connections TV. Boss! 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 Caribbean Connections TV will bring the Caribbean and its flavors to our viewers in a fresh, vibrant way that will entertain as well as educate. It's your direct connection to the Caribbean experience. Caribbean Connections TV. Buckle your seatbelts. This is going to be an exciting, fantastic, energetic, soul-stirring ride. So don't you move. Hey, it's Paradise and Jackson here for Caribbean Connections Television. And if you're wondering who is this gorgeous lady I'm sitting next to? Well, most of you should know, I'm sitting next to Miss Universe Jamaica. Hi, how are you? Casey Fennell. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm doing good. You, you're not just doing good, girl. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, yes, yeah, you, you're, you've corrected me. Yeah. I am doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> you've accomplished so much. And you're a celebrity now. I wouldn't say that. That's oh, yeah, we would say that. No, seriously. <laughs> no, it's strange for you, but... That's exactly what you are right now. Okay, You're a celebrity. If you say, if you say. Yeah, I'm telling you. So let's talk, girl Girl, talk here. Because you can talk to me because I'll understand what you're saying because I've my whole life been entering pageants too. Mm -hmm. So I can relate to you. I also had a title, Miss St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and above many titles, but I'm, I'm proud of um, Miss St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So as contestants, a lot of people don't know how it works behind the scene and what goes through your head when you're actually on stage there, right? So before we begin that, let's talk about you and how you began. Um, you are modeling first, right? Yes, I started modeling when I was about 17 years old. I had a photographer uncle and he decided to use me one day because a model of theirs backed out. So he was shooting for a Jamaican designer and they were frantic to find a model and I really wasn't experienced like that. So this was a test shoot for me. So they took a risk and it ended up being a great risk because they kept using me there on and so on. Because, you know, family is very biased. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, she's excellent. So they're like, okay. <laughs> sure and then I you know gave it my all yes. and only hoped that you know pleased the designers and I did Amazing! Congratulations. people think that models just have to look pretty right, right. but it's actually a skill to it it's not just about looking pretty when the camera goes on you actually have to know how to pose and what to do with the camera so that came naturally to you it did because um, my grandma and my mom always, you know, taught me basic etiquette. So it's always natural for me to just, you know, fall into position, you know, sit up straight and, you know, never sl slouch. So that was my household. You always get a hit on the back when you're slouching. <laughs> or if you're standing up awkward, they always fix it. You, you, know. you have siblings? Yes, I have two younger brothers. Oh, two younger brothers. Yes. Okay, so you're kind of like a tom girl? Um, a tomboy? I, actually, I am a tomboy. I... Not to the extent that you would think. I mean, I grew up as a daddy's girl. I'm still a daddy's girl. I enjoyed going to the garage with him. I enjoyed going to rallies with him because he does. He enters rallies still to this day. So I used to go to rin, um, sprints and Dover back at home, which was always exciting to me. I mean, any time I could spend with my dad, and I love getting greased up in the oil in the garage, acting like I could fix the cars, but I couldn't. And I always ride the bicycles with the boys. I mean. That sounds like a tomboy. I'm a tough girl. <laughs> you're a tough girl. You're a tough girl. And speaking, you had to be tough to enter this pageant. Why would you decide to enter a pageant of this magnitude? Well, I always wanted to enter this pageant, Miss Universe specifically, ever since I was a little girl. I had role models such as Sandra Foster, Angelie Martin Spencer, Kimberly Mays, Nicole Horton, and the list goes on and on and on. These are exemplary women that have represented our country on the world stage and did a fantastic job at doing so. So those are the footsteps that I wanted to follow, you know, because these are selfless women that teaches you to, you know, give it your all to your country and live with no regrets. And that's what I hope I did. And I hope I made my country proud to the fullest and I'm happy the way I did it. And if I had to do it all over again, I'll do it the same way. <laughs> you tell them, girl, of course, you should be proud. And we're all proud of you, everyone around the world, all the Caribbean, everybody else. You did a fantastic job. Now, um, okay, so let's talk about pageants for those people who have never entered pageants, okay? So entering pageants my whole life, I even got a chance to go for Miss Universe, which I turned down for other reasons, op other opportunities came. But are the ladies in Miss Universe as, um, how can I say, um, competitive as um, the other pageants? No, 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 no. Um, 
what TV portrays pageant to be yeah. is nothing even close, and you'd have to be a part of one to really understand. Um, you can't compare um, the same Miss Jamaica this year to the ne Miss Jamaica next year because they're two different persons, same title, two different personalities. But there were no, of course, there are girls there that you know, just like school that you didn't get along with but it's nothing to make fuss about it's just life you're not going to like everybody that crosses path with you and you just um you just praise the ones that you do get along with so it was always interesting waking up and hearing all the different languages being spoken at breakfast and dinner it was like it was like <laughs> i needed um subtitles every day but it was so interesting who did you connect with out of all the girls like who became your your best buddy your uh, friend. Well, the Caribbean girls, we all stuck close together for sure. So Miss BVI, she was my um, roommate Janine, and uh, right across of uh, across from us was Miss Mahamas and Turks and Caicos, and down the hall was Trinidad and Nicaragua. Although she's not Caribbean, we took her, we she was awesome, but we and even Miss Saint Lucia. So it was a nice group of us, and we embraced each other. So yeah, it was supported each other. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Once had a contestant who hid my dress just before I was ready to do the gown presentation. Did anything like that happen? Um, nobody. Oh no! This is so interesting. I hear these stories all the time, and I've entered it, and I had no trouble whatsoever when it came to my dresses, my shoes, my swimsuits. Everything was fine, and if anything was like ripped, not by another person, they would freak out, and I wouldn't. They'd be like, "How are we going to fix this? We need to fix this." That's about working together, and realizing you know if I didn't make it I didn't make it that's okay let's support the girls that did make it and move on because that's the that's the that's the sense of mind I would have if I didn't make it so far what was going through your head when you're modeling some of the beautiful gowns or the bathing suit in front of the judges in front of all those people what were you thinking were you like focused on what you're doing or were you thinking oh my gosh you know I have to do this right was, was there a lot of pressure I try to I tried to make the audience like not there, so I blank it out. I'm, I'm performing for an empty stadium, so I tried to block out all the noise because the moment I hear like Casey or my mom or anybody I know, I'm just going to be cheesing and laughing. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my mom, you know, like that's my dad, that's oh my gosh. So I just tried to block everybody out, but that was hard to do when it was commercial times because I, it was just going crazy, and at that point, it's like, I'm not blocking anything out, let's work. <laughs> Tell me, what, what is commercial time like? Because you said it was harder at commercial time. No, no, no not harder in that but sense. Like, it's yeah, noisy? I got, yeah, it was really oh, noisy. Yeah. Noisy in a great way because everybody was riling up for whoever was on stage yeah, at that yeah. point. So you had Jamaica, Colombia, Venezuela, whoever. So people were just yelling out. So you probably heard your name a lot then. Yeah, I heard my name. <laughs> Jamaica was my name. Because <laughs> people at home were just screaming at their television sets also. Yes, that was pretty cool. It was a great moment. Great moment. Yeah, yeah. It was an amazing moment. So, everybody, like all your fans and new fans, because you have like millions of fans now, like wow, um, was rooting for you and was really upset when, um, you know, they didn't call you, like you were in the top five. And everyone was, how was, what was going through your head? Did you expect that? Um, how did you feel at that moment when you weren't? Um I think the ultimate, my ultimate goal, just like any other compet um any other competitor was to win and they called my name and I said you did a great job I mean the fact that we even made it as far as the top five that was remarkable because we haven't been there for a long time so I'm just happy that I could have actually shed some light and love on Jamaica because it really brought everyone together to come and celebrate this you know milestone and hopefully after this each and every year our contestants will just make the same wave and noise at the Miss Universe pageant so, um, what do we expect from you now, besides after your reign? Because you probably have to meet a lot of people, travel a lot, um, you know, represent in Jamaica. What do we expect from you after your reign? I'm still, I will still be traveling um, a whole lot. I have a new, I have um, a list of new deals that I've signed. That I've already signed, pen to paper. Yes, pen to paper. So they'll be unveiled next month, and I'll be traveling for couple years to come so that's always exciting but I can't really give much info I'm just really excited for this new chapter to begin because it's time to put down <laughs> you know the sash and give it to the next young lady and just to see her life unfold you know and see her actually 
be get prepared for this because it's really so exciting and it is a one of a kind feeling to be representing your country. That answer you gave, um, wonderful answer by the way. What uh, um, I don't know how it was worded, so don't quote me on it. But what um, has Jamaica given to the world? I'm not quoted, but. Um, do you still feel that way about Hussein Bolton? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, one thing that Bob Marley gave to this world, he gave the world reggae music. And through his music, he, t he spoke, he preached about love, peace, happiness. And, you know, that we should live together in that way. And he was way beyond his time because these are messages that we still listen today and we should still live by. So, absolutely, I still stand by that. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Paradise. <laughs> brings us all together and that's why we're here together right now. So thank you all so much for having us. And just enjoy the rest of your night and you know there's food, there's drinks, live it up and wait for the roots on the ground coming up later. Much love and respect. Waiting for get up and subscribe the show over. Be in connections TV. Oh.